I'm a little bit in a rush now too. This a couple of more Muneki rides to do today, and then uh, oh, some other things. So, but now um, I got back. I've just cut my hair, so and eaten lunch with family. So, yeah. So now I will let you know what those seven cards. I will read the text related to those cards. But I may not have time to do much more than that, so therefore I start with that, and I won't interpret much more. So, um, if you want to see the cards, then look at my previous video or the one that I uh, list below. Um, okay. So, and if you didn't see my previous video, then uh, you can choose if you wish to. You can choose number one to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Or maybe a few if you like, but then have one as, I mean, keep them in, in some, or, some order so that the first one is one of them and so on and so forth. <laughs> so, okay. Well, then I will just read about the cards, although you don't see them now. So if you wish to see them, uh, then check the previous video, Google the card. You can do that too. Steampunk Tarot is this. So, okay. The f number one was King of Pentacles. And I will read that for you. A beautiful card, a lovely man, that's very apparent, a very solid and very trustworthy man this is, so, okay, um, I start to turn up the light so I see what it says really, okay. We have no more right to consume happiness without producing it than to consume wealth without producing it, George Bernard Shaw. Mm -hmm. Someone who is driven by the physical world, resources and finances in any kind of way doesn't mean that he obsessed with money. This is a very um, secure person who feels, uh, yeah, not easy to sway in either way and so on. The King of Pentacles loves a warm fire in winter and a cool breeze in summer. You will find he has decided options about the best tea, tobacco, and tailors. An ideal evening includes a savory meal, complex wine, and lively conversation. He has worked hard all his life to discover the best that life has to offer and to be able to afford it for himself. It might at first glance be easy to mistake him for a mere hedonist, but he has a broader understanding of the physical world. Like his queen, he understands the invisible connection between the physical realm and some other invisible realm. He is not as quick to call this other plane spiritual, but he knows there is an unseen hand at work. Some universal laws that guide the workings of the world to create wealth is to create order and happiness. The more wealth you accrue, the more you keep the chaos at bay or so he experience has led him to believe. Yeah, the more wealth you cure, the more you keep chaos at bay, or so his experience has led him to believe. This king is a practical man, willing to invest in worthwhile projects. He is also cautious, cons a cautious, conservative man. Do not expect him to take big risks. Show him the plan and the numbers while wearing your best suit and serving your best whiskey to demonstrate your impeccable taste and maybe, just maybe, you'll fa find a patron. <laughs> so, uh, what more to say about this guy? Um, yeah, this, this is a very earthy, grounded person, like practical, as it said. And I won't interpret the cards, but, but uh, let's say he built things. He liked to build things. And... Uh, uh, and be practical in that, but see physical clear results, you know. Uh, while I also, let's say, build things, but more energetically, I work in that realm. Although he's aware of that very much, he's <clears throat> and appreciate, I think, very much, he's still not, that's not where, where his focus is. So if this is a card for you, then uh, maybe you had a question regarding you, you can't really or you shouldn't probably ask about someone else. So um, if you are male, then this may indicate this is you. Or if it is someone, a situation around you that 
uh, involves <clears throat> some other man, and this is a mature man, maybe an older man, but at least mature. Uh, so, so maybe you can figure out somewhere in here what the um, answer is to your question or some guidance in the text. And on the picture, you have it seems like you have a book of shadows, yeah, almost like on the shelf there or over the fireplace, like a pentacle on it. Um, and also smokes a pipe and yeah he seems uh, like he get he have things in order maybe it's also a little bit his eyes the look in his eyes seems to say that he's also a bit protective about that since he don't want the chaos maybe he have had some chaos in his life and really um, he's really careful not to fall into that trap let's say again he wants to avoid that with all cost almost no not all cost but yeah he really protects his um, yeah what's his let's say mm. and then ace of cups is for number two then so obviously that's a new beginning like all aces and cups is about uh, relationships or also love sometimes but emotions anyhow it contains, it dispenses, it cleanses, it heals. It really is dead useful. The only thing is I'm not exactly clear on how to work it. This have not been manifested yet in your life. Whatever this is, the, yeah, it, 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 it have begun and it's a very positive beginning, but, it, but it's still not yet fully manifested yet. Or at least not even seen, like it's, uh, but it's there still energetically. An opportunity for an emotional experience of growth. In tarot, the element of water which is associated with the suit of cups is a powerful symbol. Take a quick trip through the cups cards and you will see that they deal with emotions and relationships. The dramatic stories of love and loss, joy and despair, romance and friendship are told in these images. The cups cards represent our feelings and relationships, which are the ways we experience water, the element that flows into, through and around our life. Water is a particularly rich symbol. On one hand it represents our subconscious and our dreaming self existing below consciousness. This connection is especially clear when we think of the ocean and the strange colorful and the alien world that exists beneath the surface. In literature, water often represents the soul, and for those who believe in a higher being, it is the cleansing grace of the divine. Water is linked, whether scientifically true or not, to the moon via the ocean tides, a relationship that heightens the mysterious, untamed aspects of this element. All that water represents is by nature hard to understand or to describe. We feel things deeply, but we don't always know why. As Blaise Pascal said, the heart has reasons that reason can never understand. Hmm. The suit of cups explores this vague yet powerful world. Both the cups themselves, which are our ways of ordering and understanding our experiences of water and the element of water and all that it represents, we begin with the ace, the pure form and expression of this suit. The cup itself is finely crafted, expressing both beauty and practicality. Representing our ideal relationship with the element of water, it is perfectly balanced in its intake of water and its outpouring. There is neither too much nor too little. Mm. The gold that can be important. <laughs> that can be important. The gold dove on top, blessing the cup and its contents, communicates the intent, the pure receiving and expression of the truest feelings of the heart through a relationship with the divine. Sometimes through some other pe person, then you want to connect with them. I wonder if I even sp spoke English to begin with, or, or if I I did this in Swedish to begin with. I'm sorry if I spoke in Swedish from the beginning. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. The gears and clockwork on the cup are a nod to the human brain's need for patterns and order this is perfectly this is a perfectly balanced system and such as such take into account human ex, uh, requirements yeah the water constantly flows in keeping the cup filled with fresh water the water flows out and nourishes the surrounding lotus flowers meaning that the outpouring of our hearts 
feeds the spiritual enlightenment of those around us. Beautiful. So this is all could be connected, or it all love is always connected to spirit, and spiritual. But um, sometimes what we call love may not be love so much. But but, anyways, this can be also in more personal relationships and such. A reflection of this greater love, let's say. Mm. Of course, as you may imagine, humans are not often in this perfect state of grace and balance. When this card blesses your reading, look for a tender gift from the universe. This will likely be an opportunity to experience, either through giving or receiving, or even both, an unexpected gift of love or other deep emotional connection. Aces always represent fleeting moments. When it makes an appearance, act on it, for it will quickly fade away. Maybe it doesn't always mean those kinds of things and not all of these kinds of things so I hope you can uh, figure what it is for you so when I tune in let's say a little bit or read them more intuitively than they just a text then I will kind of feel what it is for you most likely but okay I hope you can pick out what it is for you number three eight of cups oh um that's you who need to go in another direction although there are positives where you are at right now or in what you're doing or whatever maybe it's relationships maybe it's work whatever it is that you aren't fully satisfied with um you should go in another leave it go in another direction actually it's just the advice here and to yeah to be open to the unknown even if you don't know just go you know that much you know that it's not all that you wish for is not there and so you you kind of know that you need to do something else knowing where you are is important knowing where you are supposed to be is imperative leaving something behind to search from for something else she found the mechanism studied in intricacies cleaned, polished, re repaired. She determined exactly what it was created to do. She understood precisely what it measured, as well as how to accurately analyze the information. The strange relationship between her, the extraordinary astro astrolable, astrolabe, astrolabe? <laughs> whatever it is, and the wisdom it re reveals was, in theory, quite perfect, a dream come true. But in reality, it was not. She knew what this life was supposed to feel like, and she knew what it did feel like. The ideal and the, and the reality were not the same. With the certainty born of perfect understanding and in undeniable experience, she did what she had to do. Leaving was hard, but she told herself that her investment of time, love and skill was not wasted. Without it, she never would have known where she needed to be. Life is funny. You can be living the dream and yet be unhappy. Part of the journey of realizing that dreams are not one size fits all. Um, no matter how many people agree on any single perfect life, there really isn't one that is meant for everyone. If you are looking at this card in your reading, you know all too well what it means. You've been living a dream, but it isn't yours, at least not anymore. But you could only know this by experiencing it for yourself. Nothing is lost. No investment is, is wasted. You will bring all that you gain with you, and you as you move forward toward your new destination. With sadness perhaps, but also with certainty. Yeah, so. And then for number four, seven of cups. Many cups. In this, uh, so there are many emotions going around here on this uh, channel, all right? More so emotions than thoughts, <laughs> I must say. Sorry, I'm just laughing. Okay, uh, okay, let's see if seven cups, number four, for you. In this moment, all possible futures exist until you pick one dreams and desires. In Margaret At Atwood's post apocalyptic novel, Handmaid's Tale, Women are told that the new government makes their lives better because it gives them freedom from choice. Freedom from making choices does have a certain appeal. Making decisions can be exhausting. Who hasn't at some point said, oh, I really don't care, can you just decide? Picking something that you would want should be an easy task. If pressed, most people would prefer that to the alternative of having their choices made by somebody else. 
Unfortunately, picking one thing over another is not always that easy. The sense of responsibility and fear of making a wrong move looms over us. The Seven of Cups captures a person in the midst of a moment of choice. Cups of potential possibilities parade before his eyes slowly enough so that he can consider each one, all have something of value, all stir his imagination and speak to his heart. This is, after all, the suit of cups. His emotions are utterly engaged. He could easily spend the afternoon here, lost in daydreams. Decisions are arrived at in different ways. Careful thought, a detailed analysis of the pros and cons, and projecting into the future are all parts of the process. We learned in the Justice card that our current choices create our future, so we want to select wisely. And that will come up soon here also because uh, number six got the Justice card. Um, mm. And yet there are times when logic doesn't play a large, uh, as large a role as we like to think. When our creativity and emotions are involved, the situation can get a bit fuzzy. Fears based in past experiences cause negative reactions to perfect, suitable choices. Dreams, desires, and romantic notions cast a narrative, uh, no, no, cast an attractive haze over certain options. This beguiling card repl- reflects all the complexities of ha- having an abundance of possibilities. Will our young man become so caught up in his speculations and fantasies? that he neglects to act at all. If he delays long enough, maybe some possibilities will disappear. Of course, perhaps others will appear. When this card shows up in your reading, think about how long you're willing to stand motionless and transfixed by the wondrous potential of... Potential... (laughs) Potential... Potential, is that the word? Yeah. Of your life before lifting a cup and taking that first sip of a fresh adventure. This card represents confusion or living in a fantasy world. Maybe so. (laughs) So you need to make a choice. Take some action soon, also at least. And then we have uh, for number five, nine of cups. Very close ones, this. Mm. As is the wishing card, the very lucky card. So... Um, let's see. So, for you who chose number five. Come in and welcome. Your every desire will be served with a warm smile. Order carefully. Material, emotional and physical well-being. Back in the old days of fortune telling with tarot, tarot readers told you to make a silent wish before beginning your reading. In the Nine of Cups, show if the Nine of Cups showed up in your reading which it did for you (laughs) anyways so if you chose number five um it meant that the wish you made at the beginning would come true you probably have a wish inside anyways even if i didn't ask you to have one looking at this warm and welcoming image full of promise and fun it is easy to see how this came to be known as the wish card Our lovely hostess evokes the feeling that anything you want is available to you and that she is here to grant your wishes. Because the focus is on the happy hostess, one cannot help but wonder who gains the most. She is in the position of granting her customers desires. Does she get as much or even more pleasure in granting wishes as the guests do in receiving them? When we see this card, we are reminded reminded that wishes are just as complex as people and can be granted in many and sometimes unexpected ways. All in all, if this card is present in a reading, it brings very happy and bountiful energy with it. Although isn't there an old saying about wishes? If wishes were horses, then beggars would ride. No, no, that's not the one. Oh yes, be careful what you wish for. So, yeah, it can mean what some of these things then. You must tune in. So, uh, okay, and number six for you, it's just, this is the only major arcana. So here it's larger forces at work for you. 
at play, if you say. Justice. You play the hand that you were dealt. The way you play it will the way you play it will determine your next hand. So number six, this is for number six. I chose number six. The consequences of your actions are at hand. Hug it, and it's good ones because I took two cards for you. So it comes the next card is Seven of Swords for this. So it will work out fine for you. It will be just for you, yeah. Her gaze looks right through you, into the very core of your soul, shining a light on your motivations and interests. Stones and gems and crystals, tokens of your actions, fill one side of the scale. A feather floats gently to the other, the way of a pure heart and a clean soul. Compared to our, our, our earthly humanness, how can the scale ever balance? Karmic justice is a complex matter. The question, no, no, the equation comparing stones and feathers is a delicate balance. This is no simple operation. She must take into account every past experience, every thought and hope and fear, all your darkness and all your light, and, mi and mix it with the lessons your soul has determined to learn in this lifetime. So many variables could create a cluttered, in the decipherable mess, but her scales are precise and her objectivity complete. The end result, the final judgment, is the perfect result of your own decisions. The cards that fall from her hand are the ones you selected. When justice appears in your reading, it is a reminder that your actions have created your present situation. If you are not happy with the current state of things, Examine your intentions, motivations, and decisions with the clear and objective, objective eyes of justice. Measure your actions against your ideal. The notion that your present actions create your future is always true. It is an ongoing cycle. But if this card shows up, it is letting you know that now is a pivotal time Whatever you are considering doing in this situation has greater ramifications than you may have realized. If you are feeling that something in your life isn't fair, this card will be a gentle reminder that you should look within before blaming others or fickle fate for your current challenges. Likewise, if you are worried that someone else is getting away with something and you want to ensure that they pay for their crimes, the justice cards let you know that you don't need to worry the universe has it under control and does not need your help at this time. You have enough on your plate keeping your own karma in order. So and if this uh, uh, reading involves questions of legal decisions, this card lets you know that a fair judgment will come. Whether that judgment is in your favor though is not uh, guaranteed always, but here it is because of the seven of swords. So it will be, you will maybe people will not agree with you and so on and, and wish you not the best actually but you will uh, uh, actually this was not the one right it was the nine of mm, let's see was it the seven or so that's a thief so then maybe you will be punished for it i don't know i don't really no, the card I picked was... Yeah, yeah, I picked the card. It was not that. Sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> I must see what, what the card I picked, really. It was the Nine of Swords. I'm kind of sure what it was. Right? Uh, no, 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 no. No, it was the... Of, of, uh, not Swords. It was Wands. Yeah, yeah. That's what was the problem. Here. Seven of Wands. I'm sorry. I wrote them down so I could use the deck uh, again. So therefore I had, didn't have the card here. So, no, no, no. Seven of Wands, what are you willing to die for? What are you willing to kill for? Defensiveness. There is no doubt whatsoever in her mind. She knows she is right. There are those who believe just as vehement, vehemently that she is wrong. Below her, the cacophony grows louder, more ugly. They continue to gather, increasing in number and in aggressiveness. She is sup surprised to see people who she thought she knew who she thought understood her, it hurts her to feel the separation from their goodwill. Yet her heart never falters. Her determination is ignited to a contained calm but deadly fury. Make no mistake, she will defend herself. 
She only hopes she doesn't have to cross the line from defending herself to destroying someone else in order to survive. These ethical stances can be so complicated. The structure she stands on represents her worldview. Finally crafted, complex, every element carefully selected. It contains all her values. This is her character and the source of her strength. This is how she knows what is worth fighting for. This is what fuels the fire of her determination. This is her certainty. And yeah, so for you, you will stand um, strong and uh, stable there. Yeah, if this card shows up in your reading, you are surely feeling defensive. What is your platform like? What are you defending? Are you sure it's worth effort? How far are you willing to go to defend your beliefs? What are you absolutely certain of? Hmm. Yeah. So, but it will go well. Okay. And then for number seven, seven of pentacles, then. Good that I had time. I hope uh, not someone stumbling now um, to read this for you. For number seven, uh, how does reality measure up to your exper- expectations? App- appraising results of efforts. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. This is the one that is um, fo- focusing on his uh, uh, treasures. Yeah. The room is silent, save for the scratching of his pen, as he makes notes, and his occasional murmurings of mm, "interesting" and "fascinating" and mm, "I didn't expect that." He keeps careful notes from the beginning of his project, from the very first brainstorming ideas through myriad rejected plans to the carefully delineated final grand scheme, nothing each, uh, noting each and every step along the way until now the end of the adventure. Now is the time for the reckoning. Now is the time to answer many questions. Now is the time to make decisions based on those answers. In order of the golden dawn, a Victorian era magical order, Called the, this card success unfulfilled. Aha. Uh-huh. Interesting. <laughs> Actually, now it's actually there. Huh. As you see, in the spirit of steampunkery, I've taken liberty with that notion. Everything rides on one definition of success, and I suspect that the fine gentlemen of the Golden Dawn were perfectionists. The problem with per- perfectionism is that it is attached to. Um, predetermined outcome, Victorians were also a mickle obsessed with progress, which perhaps they extrapolated extrapolated uh, uh, to mean motion. Because this card is a pause in progress, we can see why it should be unfulfilling to them. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry if you don't really get what I'm saying so much here, but maybe now we'll see what comes now. We know, don't we, that stopping to assess our work is not a lack of progress, but rather just another step towards success, yeah. And as the grand adventure we are, we would never limit our ideas of success to a predetermined outcome. One never knows what unanticipated wonderfulness awaits. (laughs) Beautiful. So if you get this card, prepare yourself to draw up some notes. Whatever you are asking about, whatever you are working on right now, it is time to seriously assess the situation. Start by identifying what you have hoped to accomplish compared to what to what has actually occurred to date. How does it measure up? Does it fall short? Does it exceed your wildest dreams? Now that you've put in, put in the effort and you've experienced the results, was the investment worth it? What does all this mean for your next move? your questions then yeah yeah this card is a quiet contemplation of quiet contemplation is going to require a lot of brain power yeah so that was those i hope you can can figure out what they say to you specifically and feel free to comment i won't read comments for at least a time and maybe until I get like thousands of prime subscribers <laughs> then I will at least I promised um, and I will read those back far back as well so yeah uh, if so um, and um, 
And this is not my way to kind of collect subscribers. It's my way of avoiding <laughs> communication, avoiding comments. Yeah, so for a while. Yeah, anyways, um, that was that. And I hope you got something out of them. Yeah. Consciousness knows and the mind speculates. I just, um, I'm well, we'll get back when I know I have a little more space to ramble with you again. Um, yeah, I can't uh, really answer any questions you have on those, but I, but I hope you can figure out what they mean in your lives if you pick the card. Otherwise, I hope you got something out, out of them anyways. And yeah. I rush a little bit now because I have too much to do for a while, but not too much. I love that I have what I have to do, <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will check in with you very soon. Take care, sweet ones, and everyone. Yeah, bye for now. <laughs>